Good morning, you guys. It is Monday morning. Welcome to the start of another week. So far today, I just got my video uploaded for you guys, and then I've kind of just been sitting in bed reading all day because I finally can. I've nearly finished my book, and I am so excited about it. Thank you, glasses! But besides that, I've been trying to get out of bed every so often and just move around. I've really been trying to organize all of my art supplies and all my desk supplies and so far I've made more of a mess than anything but I think that I'm on the right track here. It's just really hard to get everything organized. It's never been organized. There's not really a place for everything yet so I have to figure that out. It's just like every single time that I started to get organized, then we had to pick up and leave again. And then I was just packing stuff up all willy-nilly. So basically, I just have stuff packed all over the place. No rhyme or reason. It's a little nuts in here. My goal was to try to get it like clean and organized before my knee surgery. But I'm realizing now that this is a much bigger task than I thought. There's no way I'm going to be organized eight days from now. Can you believe it? Eight days. Wow. In some ways it's like that feels so soon and in other ways I'm like oh eight days like I just want to get it over with and I want to start recovering and moving forward. I feel like I'm just kind of in limbo right now but I know I need to focus on healing and still titrating off meds so that I can just be in the best shape possible going into this surgery. Today should be interesting actually because we actually swapped a lot of my medication times. The hope is that I'm not going to be waking up in the middle of the night with withdrawals every single night because you guys know I already barely sleep and having something else impacting my sleep is just not helpful. So we're moving everything around and it makes a lot more sense this way. It's just my body is going to have to get used to it and I'm not sure how that's gonna go. But that's why I haven't made any plans today. Except my nurse is coming later to access my port. So until then, I'm just gonna take it easy. Uh, I think I'm gonna go take a bath right now, actually, because baths are so much more relaxing when you don't have your port accessed and you're not worrying about getting it wet. Let's do that. Plus, I have a pretty cool bath bomb I wanna try. Self-care. Okay, I'm really excited about this bath bomb. And guess I do wear scarves inside because it is cold. This thing is called the Dark Arts Jelly Bomb, I believe, which sounds so intriguing. I had to get it. It's really cool. It's like gray and sparkly. And I'm told that when it's in the bath, it creates like this like jelly stuff. And I have no idea what that means, but I'm so excited to find out. Anyway, I'm going to break this up because I'm not using it all in one go. And then we'll see what it looks like. Oh, it's purple inside. Oh, pretty. Okay, well, that's straight up looks like the coolest thing I've ever seen in my whole life and it smells awesome but I'm really curious about what they mean when they say jelly oh boy you mean they just mean slippery <laughs> still fizzing a little bit super sparkly ooh oh wow Oh my gosh, that is so cool. Oh my gosh, that is vile and awesome. Whoa. You guys, this product is like a game changer. You can probably use this as like body wash. Whoa. I did not expect that. I hope this isn't hard to clean out of my tub. Guess who just finished her book? Me! Woo! Guys, this is the first book I finished in a year. Oh, it feels so good. Hard work does pay off. Bring on Anna Karenina. Perfect. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. The non-shiny side, so. See how it kind of separates if you hold on the corners? Okay. So pinch right where I'm pinching, and then kind of let go for a second, pinch up here again, and then shake it open, and lay it down. Perfect! So today. So here, you see the, mm -hmm. that, that's where you can lift up to open this one. And then mm -hmm. down here? Yep, yeah, exactly. Perfect! One down. I'll take the brush. Same thing with your grid. It has, it, all of these things have an easy open side. You just gotta kind of feel your way around until you find the Does easy one. Does it matter which way it lands? Yep, it just has to land on the field. Yeah, exactly, because the outside is dirty. You just only want the inside. Peel open. Now she doesn't need gloves for this part? Nope. As long as she's not touching it and she's only touching the packaging. Okay. Right. If you actually, if you put gloves on, you'd have to switch gloves. Most of these things for easy open have arrows. Are you watching? In the right direction. Are you watching too? Yeah, you're going to learn? Yeah, you'll be the little nurse. Nurse's yeah. assistant. Perfect. All right. Thank you. Yep. See if I know. It kind of helps to kind of pop it up a little bit. Okay. Because you're trying it's to keep it to from. Exactly. Because it's a pain when it closes again on you. Okay. Put your thumb out. Tip your hand over. Palm. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Palm up. And oh, there I see the thumb. There. Yeah. yeah. Thumbs are on the outside. So by doing palm up, you can slide them on. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. One hand. Now. This can't touch. This cannot touch anything other than sterile field. Mm -hmm. All right. So now what you can do is you're going to take the gloved hand mm -hmm. and you're going to slip it under the cuff of the other glove until you're holding it like this. That, this yeah. Yep. yeah. And then thumb out. <laughs> you make that so easy. <laughs> okay. I had four no, you did it. And you're in. We're gloved. <laughs> nice. And, yep. So to put that off. That's trash. Throw it away. Blue is trash. Throw it away. Screw together. So now okay. I'll be putting the clave on. Right, so exactly. It's clear to clear. Okay. Yep. So you can get rid of blue, and you can get rid of the other blue on the microclave, and screw together. All right. Our pieces are assembled. That is. Now that. So now it's screwed in. So what I like to do is hold the needle the end up. Exactly. And you can just push down on the table until drops come out. Perfect. And you are primed. Okay. So this I can lay down? You can lay that down. Excellent. Hi guys. It's the next day. It is Tuesday. So far today has been a rough morning. I say that like every morning isn't rough, but today was especially rough. I'm just not feeling great. My body's just going through a lot and it's exhausting to get ready. There's just so many things that I have to think about that normal people might not have to think about. Stuff like taking meds, setting up feeds, making sure my blood pressure and blood sugar are stabilized and getting all my braces together and pillows for the car. It's been especially tough since I'm still like packed from probably four different trips. I just have stuff packed in bags and boxes just all over. And of course we had a lot of laundry to do. So none of my things are where they usually are. I've just been running around. I couldn't find a pair of pants. I couldn't find my camera case. Couldn't find my ring splints. And I'm very routine oriented. So I have everything really scheduled every morning to make sure that I get out of the house in time. This morning just kind of threw a wrench and all that. Not to mention that uh, my physical therapist actually is practicing in a different office now. So we're all really excited. They just opened up a third location and she'll be practicing there. But we've never been there and it's potentially farther. So we're on even more of a time crunch than usual. We did find my camera case. We did not locate my ring splints, and I found a pair of pants, which I then promptly spilled feeding formula all over, and had to go through the entire process again. But now I am all ready to go, just waiting on my mom to be ready. My biggest pet peeve is like running late, and 
we don't really know how long it's gonna take us to get there so I'm a little bit stressed. I'll be fine just once we get out that door. Hello you guys, we are just getting home from physical therapy. First good news, we found my rain splints. They were in the car. Um, second good news is I love the new physical therapy location. <laughs> it's like brand new. They were literally building it still like around us. They were putting up mirrors and putting in the floor and it's just so open and airy and like state of the art. I love it. I can't wait to keep going there. Um, yeah, it's just really nice. And it's a little bit less um, crowded and hectic than the other place. It's going to be smaller. There'll be fewer therapists and fewer people, fewer smells. All together, it's just awesome and I'm very excited. And also, I just came home to a really amazing surprise from Theramu. Thank you so much. You guys spoil me way too much. They sent me some more of their bath crystals, but these are stronger. And so, I can't tell you how tempted I am to take a bath right now. It's really cold out and I have a really bad chill. But I think I'm too tired. I don't want to like fall asleep in the bath or have anything like that happen. So I think I'm going to take a nap and then maybe later I can take a bath. But I'm very excited. So thank you so much to everyone at Theramu, especially Joel. I love hashtag no more bad days. He wrote that on the back. I love that. I'm using that now. <laughs> If you guys have never heard me talk about Theramu products before, they're CBD infused products that use emu oil, which makes it more bioavailable to you. And they're amazing. It's what gets me through all of my nerve pain. It's the only thing that's helped. And they've given the EDS community a 50% off promo code for all of their products, which I always link below in the description when I talk about them. But it is EDS Love U, just the letter U all caps but I'll write that down there this is love you guys as you guys know my mom and I were out driving all day for my appointment so we both totally knocked out when we got home I'm only waking up now and it's 10 30 she's not even awake yet but my dad made like a full home-cooked meal for her and he had to go to bed but he just left it out here for her that is love my mom gets a lot of credit because she's the one who comes with me to all my appointments and she travels with me and you know, she works very closely with me with my medical problems and I'm really thankful about that and I think I'm very vocal about that but I don't know if I'm quite as vocal about how much I really appreciate what my dad does. He is always so busy working behind the scenes and none of this would be possible without him. He works so hard to make sure that we are able to have what we have and go where we need to go and have the medical treatment that we do have. So I'm like holding my face. I don't have my brace on and my neck is tired. Um, but I mean, he works so hard every single day and he picks up double time and overtime shifts or whatever all the time just to make a little bit extra money that week and he's a pipe fitter and a welder and he just works in these crazy conditions in these awful places and awful weather and then he still manages to come home and do most of the cooking and looking after my sister and the dog when we are away and i don't know when i walked out and i saw this i just felt like it perfectly sums up my dad and all that he does for our family. Hey guys, so we are on our way to the airport. Spring break, woohoo! Just kidding. Um, it's about midnight and we decided to go on an adventure. <laughs> One of my amazing EDS friends is flying in. She's having surgery. Hers is going to be a lot more extensive and she is flying in tonight. She originally was not planning on flying today. She was supposed to fly tomorrow, but we're about to have another big snowstorm. So she got kind of stuck and I just could not take the thought of her having to take a taxi after the crazy day she's had and having the wheelchair and her oxygen and her bag. So we decided we were up for an adventure. My sister's in the back. Woo! It just I finally get to join the chaos. <laughs> My mom is behind the wheel as always, and we're coming for you, Bonnie. Hey guys! We're just hanging out. 
This is my friend Bonnie. I feel like I've talked about you like 20 times in my vlogs because you always <laughs> send me care packages that I get excited about. Uh, yeah. She was the one who made me that like not contagious patch for my bag. Do we have one? I also have one right. here. Let's we have see. On mine. Now. Look at on that. her, it's her bag, which she comment made. Comment if you think she should start a Etsy. <laughs> what does that say? <laughs> Embrace what's on your face. I mean, it oh, is for kind. oxygen, so. so She's pretty amazing. Oh my god. At gosh. some point, and I was she like, made these. Let's see, we met. Bags, yeah. You came beautiful. up to me at the conference two yeah. years ago when we were in line. In Baltimore. She was, I was the first super one. Creepy. She was the first one to ever <laughs> recognize me from videos. Ever. Then it was EDNF. No, so it was Ailer's Animal Society like, Learning Conference. This is gonna be really weird, but I've watched your videos so much. But, well, I mean, no one had ever recognized me before, so it was like. Because, you know, I'm confused wow, that she's because becoming. Because people actually watch these. I always thought I was gonna be the famous. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> what happened? I don't know. She makes lip balms and sends them to me. She's my personal spy. Yeah. And Excellent. Time. I'm okay. very picky with my chopsticks and this. <laughs> And it's like four ingredients. I mean, come on. Wow, well, you so do it really well. It's peppermint <laughs> vanilla. Yes. So yeah, we're just hanging it's out. Delish. And enjoying ourselves at three o'clock. This lovely yeah. hotel. We had a reconnaissance oh. mission. Rescued me L from the airport. My mom was running around the house I was like, like, oh, oh no, camo. there is no way. Yeah, we were, she's I, taking a taxi home. <laughs> I suggest that we all wear camo. My mom thought oh, she perfect. was so funny. She kept, <laughs> she kept she saying like, it. We should all wear camo. I started saying it until someone laughed. I said it twice. I was like, I'm not wearing camo. We can make a, We should make an entire video. That's what we should do. It is like 3 a.m. Yes. Thank you. And Bonnie wants to get up for breakfast. But we shall be back. We are I mean, I'll get up for breakfast and then yeah. go back to Duh. sleep. But I finally, after like two weeks, here finally perfected the amount of batter you need to perfectly half fill the waffle iron. Ah. Because a whole waffle's too much. Expert. Oh. <laughs> half a waffle's perfect. <laughs> well, a whole one, then you can you bring it back to your room. Medical travel. That is true. Doggy bag. You mm -hmm. have a um, toaster. Do I? Yeah, and it's the kind that you push down to pop down. Then I'm making a whole waffle because then I can put See? it in the freezer yeah. and just put it. There you go. This is why I keep her around. Okay, guys. Well, the struggle is real today. I've reached the point in my medication taper where it's really not touching any of the pain anymore. And I've been adding a little bit of Tylenol, but that doesn't really seem to do anything. So today's been rough. I really want to get in the bath with some of those bath salts, but at the same time, I really have to be careful and watch my temperature because I keep spiking like mini fevers and getting really overheated and like the next second I'm shaking with chills so I kind of can't win here. Just so tired of this every single day. I'm honestly ready to just drop the morphine and ride it out. It really only makes me feel a little bit better for like a couple hours at noon and a couple hours after midnight but then again I guess maybe I don't know how much it's helping and we're concerned about you know, if I stop now, I might not be able to make it to PT on Friday, which is really important because I really only have Friday and then Tuesday before my knee surgery. And there's a lot we still kind of have to do to get my body in the best shape that we can before going in. So now I kind of just feel like I have to stay on it for the full taper, which really is only a few days more. It's like so tiring and excruciating to even like move. I'm literally watching Hulu on my phone and on my laptop at the same time because I got up and changed positions and I'm literally too exhausted to roll over. Thursday and I'm feeling a little bit better today both mentally and physically. This morning I actually was able to get up and do something that I haven't really done in a very long time and that was doing a little bit of watercolor painting and that just really helped me to put things into perspective and to change my mood a little bit. I just posted it on Instagram and I just wrote a little bit in the caption about how I've been feeling and a lot of you guys were saying that you really understand 
And so I thought I would talk a tiny bit about that because I talk a lot about physical health on this channel and I don't know if I really talk that much about mental health. That's mostly because I don't really struggle with mental health very much and that's something that I'm really really thankful for and I know is a blessing but it is something that has been getting me down a little bit lately. I call it the six week surgery slump. For some reason after about the sixth week after a surgery I start to just feel kind of weird and this time has been especially bad because of the med issues and the other upcoming surgery honestly it's really hard to be on bed rest and it's not good for anybody it's not good for your mind to just spend all of your time in bed and i just kind of been feeling like i was losing myself i just wasn't interested in the same things that i used to be interested in even though i felt like i should be and i was just feeling kind of on edge and anxious which i think is more med related but I don't know. So this morning I was like, okay, I need to take this day and I need to figure this out and I need to work on like a self-care plan because I'm about to take on another surgery. So today has been a day of just rediscovering myself, I suppose. I did a little bit of painting. I could only sit up for about a half hour and do that. And so now I've just come back to bed and I'm doing a little bit of comfort reading which I'm so excited I can finally do again. I'm just reading through some of my favorite poems and essays, and I'm running some of my favorite smells through the diffuser. And I gotta say, I'm already feeling a lot more myself. It's just been hard. I haven't really had the time to think about my mental health because I've been focusing so hard on my physical health. Haven't really been keeping up with any of my meditation or anything like that. It's not good. I encourage you guys to always advocate for your own health and that includes your mental health. There should be no more embarrassment behind saying, you know, I'm not feeling very good mentally today than saying, I'm not feeling very well in my stomach today. Unfortunately, there is a stigma behind mental health and I know that. It isn't really viewed as an illness or a physical symptom really which is really quite strange considering how many people struggle with mental illness these days the symptoms of mental illness are just as real and uncontrollable as physical illness and unfortunately i think everybody struggles a little bit with mental illness sometime in their life some people struggle with it their entire life but also for a lot of people i think that you can just get run down the same way that your body can get run down if you're just pushing it and you're not listening the same thing can happen with your mental health if you're just pushing yourself and you're pushing yourself and you're ignoring all of those warning signs then you can get mentally run down and sometimes it takes a little tlc to recover from that and i'm not embarrassed to say that that's where i am right now and so i'm making it a priority of mine to focus on that and listening to what my mind is trying to tell me and how that is tied into how i'm feeling physically as much as i wish that it was your body just isn't really two separate entities where it's like you have your physical body and then you have your mental body they're so connected and tied in and sometimes when you get too focused on one you forget to take care of the other and that's all a concept that I've struggled with for a long time because I think I just really don't want to be my body. More so, I think I just don't really want to be my illness. And so I really try to like separate it. I'm like, okay, there's the me that lives inside my body. And then there's the me that is my body who just kind of carries me around and doesn't do a very good job of it. And things like that can work for a little while. But it catches up with you for sure you just can't think like that and i know that a lot of us want to and i am definitely not saying that you have to become your illness you are so much more than your illness if you were to sit down and make a list about all of the things about you i hope that your illness is the last one but it's got to make the list i've tried to kick it off the list a lot of times and it's just it's part of our lives when you have a chronic illness it's chronic. It's going to affect your personality. It's going to shape who you are. And that's not necessarily a negative thing. For so long, I was just so afraid of accepting that this was going to be my new normal because that felt like giving up in some ways but i found that when i did accept it it really changed the way i looked at the world and my life and my body i mean this is a part of me and honestly i don't know 
who I would be without it. There's so many people in my life that I really love that I never would have met if I hadn't gotten ill. And I never would have had you guys or any of this. I don't know if that would be even worth trading out. And this illness has shaped me, but it hasn't defined me. But that sometimes takes making a conscious decision. And that's kind of where I am now. I am deciding that I am going to choose joy and happiness. And I'm going to run towards those things that bring those feelings that really make me me. I am a daughter. I am a sister. I am an artist. I'm a lover of theater and music and literature. I play the piano. I play the flute and the ukulele. I'm terrible at the violin, but I have one. I am a friend. I am a YouTuber. I am a major introvert. I pretty much will buy anything if it has a tassel on it. There's no place I would rather be than in the ocean. I am a lover of fashion and textiles and costumes. I am horrendous at liquid eyeliner. I love writing and I love baking and I love to make people smile. And oh yeah, I also have a chronic illness. Okay, this is my new setup that I came up with for maximum pain relief. I started putting my pregnancy pillow upside down so that this would like raise my knees and keep me from sliding down off the wedge pillow. And then those pillows keep my spine and my hardware from being like the main contact point against the pillow. And it is so comfortable. It feels so good when she lies on my feet and ankles. Oh my goodness. I know so many people have their service dogs trained in deep pressure therapy, and I can seriously see why. Maybe I should get a weighted blanket. Yeah. Okay, well, I'm finally off to bed now. I've been kind of sick to my stomach these last few hours from the meds, so I've mostly just been curled up here watching Rizzoli and Isles on my laptop and answering YouTube comments on my phone. This is the first time that I've gone through and answered my YouTube comments in like probably two months. And I must have answered like at least a hundred questions and it only brought me to like a week ago. So I'm really not sure if I'm going to be able to uh, go back and answer every comment that I missed. But hopefully you guys don't mind. It's just really hard for me sometimes to keep up with all of the comments and messages that I get. It's not that I'm ignoring you guys. It's just that I don't always have enough hours in the day to fully answer everybody's questions. Now that I have the glasses though, it's a lot easier. So from here out, I should be able to pretty easily answer my YouTube comments again, which is really awesome. But I just feel so bad when I get so behind on my Facebook messages and on my Instagram, but you know, it is what it is. And if I learned anything today from my self-care day, it is that sometimes just unplugging for a day or so can really just calm your body and your mind and it can re-motivate you to get back into whatever it is that seemed overwhelming. I feel kind of productive getting all of those comments answered. Maybe tomorrow I will actually check my email. <laughs> Sorry guys, I'm just one person and I'm extremely flawed and I just want to talk to all of you and, and sometimes I can't and that stinks. I do actually read every comment, it's just that I have to like actually like, set aside time to sit down and answer questions and I don't always have the time and energy, but I try my very best. Hello you guys, happy Friday. Welcome to my bathroom again. I've lost a lot of the bathroom this week. If it looks like I'm dying, that would be because this morning I decided it was my very last dose of morphine. Not as bad as it was before because we've tapered down so far, but my body doesn't seem to really care that we tapered. It's just telling me it wants morphine and I'm saying no because I'm done with it. I'm at a low enough dose where it's safe to go off. So I'm going off and it's really rough right now. It feels like a really bad flu, but in a few days I should be over it. And I feel like I can at least go into my surgery as strong as possible, even if I wind up right back on morphine, which we're really hoping I don't. Really hoping to do the nerve block and Tylenol and Tramadol. I don't know what's gonna happen. 
but I feel like this was the best decision for my body. Anyway, that is not why we are in the bathroom. We are in the bathroom because I went to PT today and I specifically asked Trish for some tips on how to maneuver in the bathroom after my surgery. Because maybe it's TMI, but I have a really hard time getting on and off the toilet because my leg has to be straight and I am not supposed to really be bearing all my weight on it and it's kind of hard. Let me show you what I mean. Okay guys, well here I am sitting on the toilet on the internet. Never thought that would happen. Obviously it's closed and I am fully clothed. But here's my issue. This leg has to be straight. So in order for me to get up, I have to get flat down onto my foot. For me, the transfer is kind of difficult because I've lost a lot of strength in both my legs as well as my core. I've fallen a couple times trying to get up and I've gotten pretty close to being completely stuck on people's toilets. Ugh, why do I share so much about my life? Anyway, I'm trying to help you guys and I'm trying to make sure that everybody is safe at all times. As you can see, this bathroom is like floor to ceiling, tile, porcelain. I mean, there's nowhere for me to fall where it wouldn't be dangerous. So we do have a vanity right here that I can grab onto to help pull myself up, but it really isn't enough, especially because I just had surgery on my back and because the leg is on the opposite side. So long story short, we tried a few things in PT today to try to make it work. And what has worked is that we already had this towel rack. It used to be over here, but I slid it in between here and it is sturdy enough to bear my weight. So now I have a place to put my arm here, a place to put my arm here, and I can much more easily push myself up. If any of you guys are in a similar situation, I would love to help you stay safe and not fall. I wanted to share a little bit about the stance that Trish showed me as being my best bet. So first of all, slide. Make sure you are on the very edge. Don't be like me, don't be wearing socks. Be wearing something that has some kind of grip, whether you're barefoot or you have slippers with uh, grip on the bottom or shoes or anything like that. So make sure you're right on the edge. Take your good leg, slide it back a little bit so it's back kind of next to the toilet making sure that your foot is flat on the ground. If you have some things to grab onto, that's great. Grab onto them. Tighten your core. Tighten your bum. Lean forward. And push up, push up, push up, push up there. Sorry if that was weird and super intimate, but it's important. And you don't want to fall in the bathroom. That's like the scariest thing. And you don't want to mess up your surgery. And I figured, hey, if I'm struggling with it, somebody else has to be struggling with it out there too. So, got you guys covered. Oh, I need to go lie back down. I still can't really be up for too long without the neck brace without getting blended. I am out of shape. Sammy, I'm trying to get video footage of it. Hello, you guys. Happy Saturday. Today was a little bit of an up and down day. So I am officially 36 hours off morphine. So my body's been a little bit confused today. I haven't felt well, but I've been trying to be productive because there's so much I want to get done before I'm laid up again. So I'm going through my closet, got most of like the winter stuff out of there. I needed to make room because I had a bunch of other clothes that didn't fit in my closet. But I am trying to slowly go through my stuff and get rid of stuff, which honestly is something that I'm not very good at. Unless it doesn't fit. If it doesn't fit, then I'm getting rid of it. I used to be like 20 pounds heavier, so anything from that era of my life does not fit and I don't think will ever really fit me again. It's still a total disaster in here. If anything, it's like more of a disaster. I'm trying to go through my desk, but now everything's like on the floor. What have I done? I have done all I can do. I've got to go to sleep now. I'm exhausted. It is time to end this week's vlog. If you liked this video, let me know with a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos, I make them every week and you can subscribe. And next time I see you guys, I will have already had my surgery. I feel like we've been waiting for this for so long. I feel like you guys have honestly really come along on this journey with me from the beginning of my knee issues 
to now. So it's crazy to think next time you see me, it'll be done. I'll try to keep you guys updated on my Instagram and Facebook. Usually Instagram is the first place I update. So if you're really looking for like moment to moment updates, that's where you should find me. I always have it linked under my videos and I think it's in my like about page. I'm not quite sure how that works. If you guys found me here, you can find me there. Okay, I'm gonna stop rambling. I will see you guys next week. Bye.